Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to go over the basics of color correcting in the Lumetri color panel. So I've got a couple of example clips on my timeline, one just a basic flat image and one where it's a little bit too yellow and the white balance is off. So before we begin working, we want to make sure we're in the color workspace. If you don't see this, you can go to Window, Workspaces and Find Color. Do keep in mind that the Lumetri Color panel is a newer edition, I think from CC 2015 and up. So if you're using an older version, you might not see these panels. Now on the left hand side, you might see all these crazy looking scopes and graphs. And what these are, are the Lumetri scopes. It's basically a way for you to read the color in an image and get some information graphically about what's going on. These are here to help us make sure we're accurately seeing what's going on. Because remember, depending on what type of monitor or display you have, your colors might be off. One monitor might be a little bit cooler and one monitor might be a little bit warmer in temperature than another. So if yours doesn't look like this, you can always right click on it and you can see right now I've got the vector scopes open and a waveform, which is what you see here. And you can open up more things. You can open up a histogram. You can also change the way that you see these. So you can play around to see which ones you like. But once you understand what these are trying to tell you, they won't look as confusing. So a basic breakdown of these, this is our color waveform. So it kind of represents exactly the colors that are in this video by location. You see as the players on the left hand move, you can also see these colors move because of the red in the jersey. You can see that red is represented here and the blue and green and different color channels are all represented here and how strong those values are across this image. You can also see the same concept being applied in the histogram. Basically the top here is pure white. And since this white balance is really off, there is no pure white being shown in this image. And the bottom is pure black. And this histogram is also displaying to us a bit of that yellow overload in the highlights. The same thing here, this shows you how much of each color there is. So where it's kind of leaning towards, in the middle is pure white and you can see this is kind of leaning towards the warmer colors like red and yellow. So use these as a visual aid, that's what they're meant for, but don't get too caught up on getting confused by them. So now let's go to the Lumetri color panel and you'll see we have six different settings. Basic correction, creative, curves, color wheels, secondary, and vignette. This is kind of an entire workflow for you to go through and get the color exactly how you want. But in this video, we're really looking at the basic correction. The terms color correction and color grading are often used interchangeably, but the difference between them is color correction is to get things correct as they were supposed to be in camera. So if you didn't shoot your exposure and white balance perfectly in camera, this is your chance to fix the white balance, fix the exposure, add a little bit of contrast and adjust the highlights and shadows as needed. It's not really a place for you to get creative with the colors. That's why they have this whole creative section where you can apply different preset looks and you can also go into the curve section and color wheels and all that. But I go over all of these creative options in a whole separate video, which I'll link at the end. So let's open up our color correction. So input LUT or lookup table is just a way for you to apply a preset adjustment. So it comes built in with a few and these are based on different cameras but these will just apply a preset amount of contrast and exposure and whatnot. Oftentimes it won't look the best unless you're actually using a good starting point as they're meant for. So this image is actually pretty good on the white balance. Let's go to that hockey footage and this is way too warm. So what you can do is adjust the temperature slider to add a little bit of coolness to it. And you can also adjust the tint. You can see here it's still a little bit too green now. So I can pull it more towards the purple section and get a nice white balance. And here's where you can use the color scopes to make sure that everything's aligning. So when I pull it to green, you see how everything splits. But when I pull it together, we actually get a white line in this waveform and you actually see the colors pull closer together here. Another cool trick you can do is use the ink dropper. So I'm gonna double click. Whenever you double click on anything in these sliders, they reset to default. And you can use the ink dropper as well to say, well, I know for sure this point in the video is supposed to be white and you can click on it and Premiere will do its best to adjust the temperature and tint. So you can see that did a great job as well. And you could use that as a starting point and then tweak it to your likings and to the vector scopes as well. So next, let's talk about the tone section. So I'm going to go back over to this clip, which is a little bit more flat. 
and we have a few settings that might be familiar in Photoshop or within a camera. So exposure will increase or decrease the amount of light if your original video was over or underexposed. Contrast will add or take away a bit of contrast to the colors and highlights and shadows and whites and blacks play together but they're not exactly the same thing. So highlights, if you notice in the color tones, will adjust the highlights, which is kind of the upper third portion of the image. So all the white and bright areas. But it won't actually adjust the white point, which is this highest point. So this can be useful because we can increase the highlights and contrast. And if we happen to start losing information or things are starting to get blown out, we can always pull back the actual whites a bit and retain some of the detail and information back. Also the same thing, shadows, you can darken up the shadows or increase the shadows. But if you're starting to lose some information, you can always lift up the black point or lower the black point for whatever look you're going for. So you can see when you hit this check mark, you can preview before and after your color correction and see the adjustments that you've made before and after and whether you want to keep going or change things. So there isn't really a right and a wrong in filmmaking when it comes to the art of color. However, I'd say there is a bit more of what is true white. You know, white balance is white balance. You can't really argue that. And there are other tools here like creative and curves and color wheels for you to get more creative with the actual colors and tints for the artistic look that you're going for. So I'm going to leave a link for you guys to check out my full tutorial on color grading and the rest of these options. And if you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure you leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe to my channel if you're not. So you stay tuned for all of my new future videos. You guys can follow me on social media at Justin Odisho. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.